Something really interesting happened to me the other day. I was having a discussion with someone about something I had written, and before I knew what would come out of my mouth, I said, my primary identity is a writer. But wait a minute. I'm so many more things than a writer. Why would I say that's my primary identity? I'm a parent. I'm a spouse. I'm a minister. I'm an activist. I'm a person who loves the world fiercely. So why would writer come out of my mouth? And I've been thinking about it a lot. And what I discovered is this. That's part of my 24-7 personality. That's the way that I process all the other pieces of my identity, especially when I'm alone. It's how I take care of myself. So who are you when you're alone? What is your authentic identity? Are you living your Unitarian Universalist values? when no one's watching? And do you apply them to yourself as generously as you apply them to the world? How is your identity showing up for you when you're by yourself? Have you decided what you want to do with your life? Or has your life told you the story of who you are? One of the things about my personality is I like people to like me. I like people to be comfortable around me. I like people to express their views around me in a safe space. But sometimes making other people comfortable compromises my own values. And when I first started out on this journey towards ministry, I wasn't ready to share it with the world. The lore of Facebook got to me and I opened a second Facebook page, one for my Unitarian Universalist friends, one where my family was invited to join, understanding that I would be expressing my values. On my first page, I read a lot about other people's values, and even when I disagreed, I didn't respond. The more I kept that Facebook page, that second Facebook page, and the more I felt compromised in my identity. I was doing things to make other people feel comfortable on that page, but I didn't feel comfortable there. I wasn't applying Unitarian Universalist principles and values to myself, and I was definitely compromising my 24-7 identity when I was alone. But who am I authentically? Who are you? What are we on this earth to do, especially when we're alone and no one's watching? Parker Palmer says that before I can tell my life what I want to do with it, I must listen to my life telling me who I am. When I listen to my life telling me who I am, I know that I need to be less adaptive to make people comfortable around me. I need to be more open about my own faith and belief system and not afraid to be wrong when I express how I feel. I have to take care of myself, not in a selfish way, but in a way that feeds resistance. Did you ever think about that? That taking our principles and our values and applying them back on yourself that you could be feeding resistance. In the concept of karma, it's widely understood that karma is impacted by how we treat other people. But one of the most amazing things, and I don't remember where I learned it in Buddhism, for me was I had an impact on karma by how I treated myself, treated my authentic self, how I was nurturing it. About A week and a half ago, it was my ordination, and every piece of it was so special. There were so many people there holding me in love and affirming my identity, but also Reverend Meg Riley, 
was there to do the charge to the minister. And I was not only charged with continuing to push the edges of our faith, keep my eyes on the margin that I'm called to where race and class collide. I was charged with taking care of myself. And I charge you with that as well. Reverend Meg said, key to accomplishing all the other tasks, I charge you to care for yourself, body, spirit, heart, and mind. Take time to think about nurturing yourself regularly in small doses. To take the values that we have been given and use them to nurture our own identities so that we can be strong in who we are no matter what place we find ourselves in. Because there's a tendency in white supremacy culture that tells us we need to behave differently around different people and adapt ourselves enough to make them comfortable. Who we are authentically when we're by ourselves, who we nurture with our spiritual practice or exercise or listening to music or whatever within reason makes you whole, that's important. That's radical. And that is pushing back against the system. When we do brave things to be who we are, that pushes it back against the system. That's easy to say for someone who identifies as white, who identifies as cisgender female. I have a lot of privilege. And when I'm alone, I can explore that privilege and I can practice using it. And I can practice when I'm alone, making mistakes while no one's watching and recovering from them more gracefully. But take care, friends, that what you do while you're alone doesn't hurt others, especially yourself. Be thoughtful. Take breaks. Have a Sabbath. Love yourself 24-7. If my mission and my identity is a writer who loves radically, I have to love myself radically too. And I charge all of you to love yourselves as radically as you love the world. May it be so. Blessed be. And amen.